So Peter Thiel put it beautifully, we wanted flying cars, but we only got 140 characters. And I'm going to try to answer today why I believe that's the case. Uh, like many of us in this room, I was inspired at a very young age by flying cars. I received this when I was about 10 years old, and I really wanted to create that future somehow. But as I've spent the years working on this problem, I don't believe that flying cars require a flying car or even a new aircraft form factor. So if we're going to talk about flying cars and the concept, first we have to understand what general aviation is, because if we had a flying car, it would live inside of general aviation. And as many of you know, I just saw all your hands up. Uh, you probably all fly these aircraft. There's about 10 times more general aviation airplanes and helicopters than there are commercial airliners. Everything from small airplanes, big airplanes, small helicopters, big helicopters alike. And unfortunately, general aviation is not headed in the right direction right now. Most pilots are general aviation pilots in the United States. And since 1980, the numbers have gone down by a little over 150,000. Meanwhile, the US population has actually climbed by 119 million people. So climbing population of people, fewer pilots to speak of. Why is that? Well, first of all, as many of you are very well aware, it is too complex. These are real pictures of airplanes and helicopters that exist inside general aviation today. And what you see on the left are airplanes, on the right are helicopters. No two make model aircraft are the same. They all have their own pilot's operating handbook, hundreds of pages long, and most pilots have to memorize this in order to be safe and proficient in flying that aircraft. In the center, of course, you see the startup process in a Robinson helicopter. It's about 36 steps. It's very error prone, takes a lot of time. And that, of course, is just to start the engine. The other sad point is that it's too dangerous. Uh, these are the safety statistics in general aviation in the United States alone over the last decade. There's been over 12,000 accidents and almost 4,000 lives lost. My hand was up uh, earlier. I've lost three friends since I started the company. And when you start to peel back the layers and look at what is killing people in general aviation, it is almost all owing to pilot error. And it's not that pilots are bad, it's that they're operating these aircraft in incredibly complex environments, and all it takes is one or two mistakes, and before you know, it gets out of hand and you have a really bad outcome. So all but one of these things is directly as a result of pilot error. The next point is, it's too expensive. So when I tell people who aren't that familiar with general aviation today that the best-selling airplane in general aviation is a little over a million dollars, Everybody has these really beautiful airplanes in their mind, and I think it's something really fancy, and I share this airplane with them. And of course, this is the Cirrus SR-22, one engine, one propeller, doesn't even have retractable landing gear. Fantastic airplane, but not a lot for a million dollars. So I believe to fix general aviation, we have to make it simpler, safer, and cheaper. And if we look at the other part of the industry, commercial airliners, this list of common causes of fatal accidents basically doesn't exist because fly-by-wire technology has already come to that industry and really taken off the table with automation basically every one of these top causes of fatal accidents. And that's what we've been working on at Skyrise for eight or nine years now, is taking that technology and bringing fly-by-wire and advanced automation to have that safety benefit to general aviation. And the first problem you encounter when you look at a commercial airliner, which is on the left, is that the technology, the boxes that power the digital flight control system is the size of an entire room. So when you go inside the cockpit of an Airbus or a Boeing, underneath that cockpit is this room. It's the size of a small conference room, and it's all the different boxes that power the flight control. So when the pilot puts in a command, it communicates to that room, and then that room communicates to the flight control surface. And in Sully Sullenberger's case, it kept him from stalling the aircraft. That room, of course, is far too big to fit inside any make, model, airplane, or helicopter in general aviation today. So over the last eight years, we've rode Moore's Law all the way down to fit that room inside the size of that box, which is about the size of a toaster. It's triplex dissimilar, fully redundant, 10 to the minus ninth. So general aviation airplanes and helicopters today are entirely analog, right? They're mechanical controls, cables and pulleys. It's much like the handbrake on your bicycle. But when you introduce fly-by-wire technology, you can completely reimagine what these aircraft look like. And this is the helicopter. This is how it looks right as it comes off the assembly line. It's the helicopter I learned how to fly in. And this, of course, is what it looks like now with our technology on board, 
We're able to completely remove the cyclic, the collective, the pedals, the things that normally your hands and feet are fully occupied managing as a helicopter pilot, and replace them with two touchscreens, one control stick, and that's it. And when people fly this aircraft, it's very intuitive. Um, I'm going to show you in a second what it looks like to fly. Before I do that, this is what it looks like to start it up. You swipe your finger and it turns the engine on. To pick up into a hover, you literally swipe your finger up. So incredibly automated. It takes about 15 minutes to learn how to aviate this aircraft. And we've taken the better part of about 100 people, all walks of life, pilots, non-pilots, people who've always wanted to fly. And we've given them 15 minutes of training, and then we put them in our prototype aircraft, and we let them fly. I'm going to show you what that looks like. And some of those folks are actually in this room here. Beautiful hover, Bruce. <laughs> What a sensation. We don't get this at fixed point. Uh, it really is easy. Go. I don't use that word lightly. Well, this is easy. I can do this. Boy, what a perfect day. I just can't get over how freakishly intuitive it is. Kind of never gets old, does it? We also, July of last year, did a world's first. So if you're going to introduce a fundamentally different way to fly an aircraft, you not only have to fly in normal conditions, but you also have to be able to do things in the case of emergencies. So in the case of a helicopter, if you lose the engine, you have to do what's called an auto rotation. It's considered one of the most challenging maneuvers in all of general aviation, and we did it for the first time in history, fully automated, all the way down to the ground, and this is what that looks like. We've done it since many times, highly repeatable, very easy to do now. Auto auto rotation is just one bullet point on this entire list of general aviation firsts that we bring to the industry. This is our quote unquote window sticker for the aircraft that's sitting outside. So if we want to make general aviation safer and easier, it has to go beyond helicopters though. We know there's a lot of airplanes that look like this today and they're designed this way because of those mechanical flight controls that take up a lot of space in the cockpit. But soon it will look like this by the same technology. And military aircraft are very difficult to operate, and we want those military pilots to be focused on the mission, not on aviating. You can take a cockpit that looks like this and turn it into this. So if you make it safer and easier to fly, it gives you the opportunity to chase after lower cost because now you have increased demand. And we all understand economies of scale and learning curves. And if general aviation as an industry, the whole industry, was building airplanes and helicopters at the volume of just the Tesla Model 3, we'd have the opportunity to bring the cost of general aviation airplane or helicopter down to the same as a car. So back to Peter Thiel's quote and the answer to why. You know, I think it's coming from the right place, but it's a little bit off. I would submit that this is the answer. And we think about beautiful places in the world like this where we'd all like to fly our flying cars to one day in the future. Uh, it's certainly not going to look like this in our lifetimes. It's probably not going to look like this anytime too soon, but you can have this starting next year. We're taking deposits right now. That aircraft will be shipping end of next year. Thank you very much. It's hard to be down if you keep looking up. Just keep looking up.